new guests. We have our recurring co-host, Forrest Denz. We have Chris the Money Man Sloboda. We've got some scientist guy who might not want his name said, <laughs> but I'm going to call him Dr. Dom. <laughs> and we have Jenny Dumas, who's here because she believes in Bigfoot. So, <laughs> we're here. We're going to talk about Bigfoot today. How are you guys all doing? Good. How are you? Great, doing Jeff. Good. Thanks for having us. Good. I'm doing, doing good. good. Forrest gives us a thumbs up because he's not cool enough to get a mic today. We were going to have a bunch of mics, but Chris failed. But we still love him. Man. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Thanks for dropping the ball on that one. Yeah, I know. I blew that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get going. The goal of the show is to convince the 10-year-old whether Bigfoot exists or does not exist. Right now, what do you think, Forrest, before we get into any of the topics? Does Bigfoot exist? Um, uh, like Pretty much all my life, I thought he probably could exist, so that's where I'm at now. All right. Dr. Right on, Do- brother. Dr. Dom, what do you think? I think he probably does not exist. Mr. Money Man Chris. I'm going to say I like the thought of him existing. So I'm going to say he probably exists, and it definitely warrants more science. All right. What do you think, John? I do believe that there is Bigfoot somewhere. Although I am sporting Bigfoot socks. <laughs> I am also sporting oh, Bigfoot socks. Hang on. We're, we're on live now, too, so... <laughs> Sorry for you who are just listening. <laughs> it's not such a good show. And I am also donning a tinfoil hat. and a Oh, Bigfoot t-shirts. But I do not believe in the Sasquatch. I have a big Lebowski t-shirt. Does that <laughs> count at all? No. Do you believe in alcoholism? <laughs> <laughs> that probably counts. That is my life, by the way. That way. <laughs> we can talk about that later. All right, John. Why does Bigfoot exist? Um, I believe that Bigfoot exists because there are lots of different cultures and people and states and just everywhere. Somebody has a story about a Sasquatch type being, and I believe that some of them are isolated enough to where I don't think that they could be influenced by outside Western culture to where that that is what they believe. And they've had encounters with these things. And I don't know. I just I put some weight into that. What do you think, Mr. Chris? Do you want me to go through my whole list now, or can I save some of it? For you can the save argument? some for now, but for why, argument sense. Why, why do you think there's a Bigfoot? <clears throat> you know, I. Here's the thing: is I think that there's enough evidence at this point in time uh, to warrant continued science towards discovering a Bigfoot. But I think that there's a. I agree with Jenny uh, in the fact that not only culturally, but you know. Globally, you, you're seeing, you know, uh, documented uh, sightings. So we have thousands of sightings just here in the United States, but that we're not. That doesn't include uh, what they call the Yeti in the Alps, or you know, wherever you may be, and in, in from the tropics to. Uh, you know, more of a, uh, a cold climate weather, you see sightings from, from all over the globe. So I think uh, because of the number of sightings and the different, the number of people coming together and, and all having very similar type of, of sightings, I think that it, it definitely warrants uh, more exploration. All right. So I guess as long as we're talking to the believers, we have to get into exactly what we believe in. So are all these Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, are they all the same creature or are they different depending on location? Like is a Yeti white like a polar bear and then a Sasquatch is brown like a grizzly bear? Is there a difference or are they all the same creature? Is there a different physiology? I think there's a lot of environmental factors that would go with that. I mean, you see, uh, you know, and I know uh, Dr. Dominic here will be able to chime in on this as well, but uh, even human anatomy is affected by uh, the climate that you live in. So uh, if you live closer to the equator, you have lar- larger nasal cavities. If you are, if you live in the Arctic, they're much smaller. So uh, the body is going to adapt and evolve based on uh, your, you know, the climate yeah. that you're living in. So. Yeah, I think you'll see, uh, you know, I mean, whether it's a white to for camouflage for the snow or a brown or a, a black, I'm sure there's other features that would change based on those, cli- you know, the climate factors. 
All right, let's call an expert. What do you think, Dr. Dom? Well, I'm not saying Bigfoot exists. Can you hear me okay? I got yeah, it. Yeah, I'm great. All right. I'm not saying Bigfoot exists, but if there was a – and actually there is a scientific study that looks at Bigfoot hairs, and they refer to Yeti, Bigfoot, Sasquatch as anomalous primates. I love that term, anomalous pri- primates. So if there were anomalous primates roaming the earth, I think, especially if they've been around for a while and the populations have been separate. So let's say the North American one separated from the Asiatic one, separated from the Russian one or whatever, because they've reported them in all those areas. They would most certainly be differences. So you'd have differences based on, like you said, climate. You'd have differences based on altitude. You'd have different based on food. I mean, one of the things that these anomalous primates are compared to often is bears. And one of the things I'm going to say is a lot of sightings of Sasquatch have actually been of bears but if you look at bears which is another large omnivorous animal similar to you know us in a way you see lots of differences um polar bears eat different things and have a different metabolism and a different look than brown bears which look different than black bears and then you have something like the panda which is kind of a divergent bear and that thing only eats plants the whole time can't trust the chinese (laughs) (laughs) well maybe they eat everything i don't know but according (laughs) according to you know so you're what you're saying is definitely true if there are anomalous primates roaming the earth and they're in different areas we can definitely expect to see very different physiologies and structures. So, yeah. I guess I can't answer my question. <laughs> sort of. No, definitely. He's right about that. Okay. <laughs> so, there's all kinds of different Bigfoots. There's Sasquatch it, yes. and Yeti. And mm. What's the Russian one called? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't I'm know. the detractor. Don't look at me. <laughs> there's a... Uh, uh, Elmasty. Wow. <laughs> I knew you would know. All right. Namaste? What? <laughs> Elmasty. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Is the Russian Yeti. Mm-hmm. So oh. we've got Yeti, Sasquatch, Bigfoot. There's a Yowie in Australia. There's an Orang Pendek in Sumatra. Wow, I really did bring an expert. I was not so... Yeah. I right. didn't think you were going to come <clears throat> up with all that stuff. I didn't offer my services for no reason. <laughs> so since we have an expert, when was, <laughs> around what time was the first sighting of uh, the very first Bigfoot? The first... What like, do you mean? Well, like the first time someone <laughs> recorded seeing Bigfoot. There are cave drawings creature. that are thousands of years old. You're talking about actual media of you want, of like, the creature. Rich, uh, was it Rostock Patterson? Or? Right? Wasn't it uh, Richard Patterson? Yeah, the Patterson the first media, but Patterson just, and Gimlin. Patterson Gimlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we talked about earlier that it's uh, like based steeped in history and a lot of other stuff. Um, a lot of people say aliens are steeped in history as well. So yeah, there's cave drawings about aliens too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of stories about. Um, wild men and hairy men that are, mm-hmm. that, that are very yeah. pervasive in almost all cultures There's a lot of stories like that too flood stories alien stories very large animals like large buffalo and large deer and large boar and things like that as well as the hairy wild man and so yeah so to, i'll give you that one that's definitely true actually this is a, this is a great segment and 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 caveman if you don't mind <laughs> uh there's there's five theories as of right now, as to what Bigfoot may be, and that's uh, number one, the North American ape. Uh, Dominic, I think you talked about, you know, did it split at some point in time? Uh, was there a species that came over to North America? Uh, the second was, is it is it more human? Uh, is it a an offshoot of the human species? The third would be a forest spirit, <clears throat> which uh, not not the forest sitting next to me, but, <laughs> um, you know, a forest spirit in, in, uh, native folklore. <laughs> the fourth theory is a, uh, Bigfoot alien theory, which is, uh, that Bigfoot is not of this world and comes accompanied, uh, uh by aliens. Does it come with a probe? <clears throat> that I didn't, I'm not sure about that. Uh, well, we got to look for a probe. I'm sure if if he's got big feet, he's got a big probe. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> and number five is that it's just a myth or a legend. That, so That is also just a myth. <laughs> just because I have small feet doesn't mean my probe is small. <laughs> my probe is just small. That has nothing to do with my feet. <laughs> Mutually exclusive. <laughs> So anyway, there, there's the there there are the five theories. So I thought that was a good you know tie in to what we're talking about here, uh, as to you know where when, where do you see it? So not only cave paintings and stuff, but folklore 
and uh, it's even been known to be uh, a native spirit. Awesome. I was going to ask, with all these cave drawings, do you think there's like fiction sections in the caves and like uh, maybe uh, like a fiction section and a non-fiction section and. Because the lower you, ones are from the kids. Do, aren't there also cave drawings of uh, people fighting dinosaurs? I don't know if you know that, Dom, or not. I haven't heard of any. I know this. I mean, I'm not saying it's not true, but um, there's most cave drawings that I've seen have been of you know, you know, uh, ice age, post ice age kind of animals. So you have large elephant like, mammoth like animals. You have elk and moose and deer and those kind of things, boar and lots of large animals. And I. Th- don't know if there's any for saber tooth cats, but there definitely was overlap between saber tooth cats and humans. So, but nothing like dinosaur, because I've heard arguments that, oh, dinosaurs are still around, or, you know, maybe people overlapped with them, but I've, I haven't heard anything, con- I haven't seen anything convincing of that. There's lots of monsters that could mm-hmm. be misconstrued as dinosaurs, but to be perfectly honest, our understanding of dinosaurs has changed in the past 20 years. You go look at the original Jurassic Park. All the dinosaurs are scaly and gnarly looking. And now we know that most of those dinosaurs were covered in feathers. So if we don't know what dinosaurs look like, we can't say that a cave drawing is a dinosaur. So I really, that's where I'm really skeptical of that. So, you know, it could be, but. It's hard to tell. I forget what I watch. I watch a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. (laughs) Especially especially for prep for this show. So sometimes it may not be so scientific. It's research. It's just research for you. I write a lot of stuff off as research. (laughs) (laughs) I do too. (laughs) Oh, no. I I don't think we're going to segue into that. If if there are big Bigfoot or Sasquatch or Yetis, where are the little ones? You never see a report of a little one. I have heard reports of little ones. Really? Yeah, there's actually a couple videos out there of of a little of, one, yes. of little ones, yes, with a big one. And there are reports and sightings of of little ones. I've not even actually. Well, there's seen been that. some um, eyewitness sightings of them in the trees, so they feel like the younger ones are like they're trees. arboreal. They live in yeah. trees. That, well, the younger ones are more able to climb trees than the bigger ones. So. Wow, I yeah. use a big word. We better edit that I out. No, that was nice. Uh, I, <laughs> don't, I <laughs> thought the same thing. I was like, <laughs> I'm impressed. That was. <laughs> That act is falling thin. I'm going to have to edit that out. We're going to replace that with high stuff. Oh, come on. (laughs) Make my job harder if you're not going to use big words and educate the people. (laughs) No, that's your job. I'm the dumb host. I'm just supposed to keep the conversation flowing. Forrest, what do you think? About what? Have we convinced you at all that there's Bigfoot? Not really, but I do have something to say about the little ones. The little ones could be very easily confused with other things like forest creatures that we may not even have discovered yet, like other species that we haven't seen yet but we could discover. And they could also be normal animals that we already discovered that live in the trees. That's a really good point. That's a valid point. For sure. <clears throat> yeah, because I mean, this, the once you get below, I don't know, six foot, you know, you're talking about it could be a multitude of things. And, and forest, that is a perfect lead into some of my notes here, which I will gladly share with the group. <laughs> Please do. <clears throat> um, as far as other species, in the last 10 years, we found uh, there are some new uh, species of mammals that have been discovered. So uh, uh, to, to, you know, to talk a little bit more about and, and there's thousands of species every year. And, Doctor, I'm sure you can talk a, a little bit about that, too. But a lot of those are plant uh, and, and you insect, know, insect a species, a insect. lot of insect species. Uh, in 2005, the Sunderland uh, leopard was discovered. 2010, there was a new species of deer discovered in Vietnam. Uh, and here's two that I find to be really interesting. In 2010 in Brazil, uh, there was a new monkey discovered, new primate discovered. Uh, 2012 is the most recent, and that's the Lasula monkey in uh, the Republic of Congo. Uh, so there's two primates uh, discovered in the last uh, seven to eight years. So it's not unheard of, and I think you hear a lot of that uh, from the community in general. That well, how how could we possibly not have found you know a big uh, a eight foot creature roaming around the world like how is it undiscovered at in 2017 but here we are in 2012 still still turning up new species of primates what size was that monkey 
How? What size was the primate I, that they discovered? I I do not know that. Was like the little one that like the helper well, monkey from? The no, the one in Brazil was a, oh, was a knows, fairly yeah, decent medium, size. It's a medium sized monkey. It's our typical arboreal monkey, I believe. Well, so. <laughs> there's actually another incident that came out of the Congo where over a hundred thousand lowland gorillas were found. There you that's, go. That's not one. That's a hundred thousand. Mm. A population of a hundred thousand gorillas that previ- previously unknown. That's massive. Was discovered in two thousand eight in the Congo. So, if I may, um, that's all true and all correct, and it's a very good point. But there's a slight difference between those species and the Bigfoot of lore, if you will. The Bigfoot that we're talking about, uh, the, the animals you're talking about, are very localized. Mm. We went to a place. That Westerners have never been before. Uh, probably, I know for, no, for certain for some of those examples, the natives were like, yeah, there's this, there's this creature out there. And, you know, Westerners were like, oh, we never found it. Then we found it. Or we went to an area of the Congo and we found a bunch of gorillas there because it had never been explored. That happens all the time. I hope it still happens because that means we're going to discover new things. Mm-hmm. And that's awesome. The problem with applying that to the Sasquatch myth or lore, or I, I don't want to be derogatory by saying myth the sasquatch of lore is mm-hmm. the fact that it is all over people have sightings of it all across the pacific northwest mm-hmm. all across siberia all across the himalayans and in those areas so that makes its existence less probable in my opinion because if you have an animal with or animals now we're talking about multiple species with such extensive ranges it makes the probability of them staying hidden much lower. Because like those lowland gorillas they just found, they were in one area and we just happened to never go there. All right, that makes perfect sense. But when you say there's an animal that lives in Northern California where there's tons and tons and tons of people and now tons and tons and tons of people looking for it, as well as Alaska, as well as the West, uh, the Eastern Old World, that hurts the argument actually. I'm not saying, like I said, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, or I'm not saying it's impossible that it exists, but that hurts the argument. Because if you're dealing with a wide roaming animal, it's going to be more likely we're going to run into it, especially now where you have Animal Planet TV shows and mm-hmm. all this other stuff. So so I, I don't want to take away from what you're saying, mm-hmm. but there is a, a downside to that argument. Yeah, no, and, and I agree with that. I, I think... Uh I think more importantly, maybe what I was trying to get across to anybody that is listening is that uh, I think I think a lot of the society kind of roams through and does their goes through their daily lives and never stops to think, uh, oh, we know species are disappearing, mm. but do does the general public really know that species are being discovered? And I think that's that was probably what I was more or less getting at with with some of the facts is that there are still species that are being discovered. A lot of them albeit insects or mm. plant life. Uh, but we're still finding large, you know, larger animals that are roaming the uh, planet. And I agree with you, Doctor. They're, they are very localized. I mean, we're talking Brazil or, you know, the Congo, whatever th- that may be. Um, I think to, you know, if we look at, I would say if we're going to look at one range, and I would say like if we take North America and we say, all right, the, maybe there's an estimated, I guess the the Bigfoot Research Organization estimates somewhere between 2,000 and 6,000 uh, a creatures roaming North America. So somewhere in that range. And if you were to take, uh, if you're taking mortality rates of, let's say, the gorillas, and I think gorillas live about 40 years, right? So uh and their mortality rate is around 5%. So if you take the the numbers that the BFRO is estimating in North America, we're talking that maybe 100 to 300 carcasses a year are in all of North America, would be found anywhere in North America. So, you know, this discovery of it is still important. And that that brings us to the next phase, which would be why haven't we found any bones? Right. I mean, uh, uh, I did a lot of bone stuff in, <laughs> in university and, and that is your specialty. So, um, you know, why are there no bones? Well, if, if I think climate has to do a, a lot with that and also the, the pure, the, the sheer number or the small number of carcasses that would be found. So if there's a hundred to 300 carcasses and this is a forest, forested damp area, you would literally have to stumble across this carcass. Within right. days of its of its demise, well, with all the scavengers around, I mean, as soon as something's dead, 
Everybody's sure. coming to get it. And it's very hard to fossilize. I mean, it almost takes fossilization out of the equation if if you're looking at 100 carcasses in a in a damp, you know, forested area. That's a tougher uh, that's a little tougher task than, than let's say a dry arid or maybe unless it fell into like a peat bog. Mm. Right. But then at that point in time, you know, if we're fishing through peat bogs, maybe that's the way to go. Maybe that's where we should start. Well, first of all, yes, I would love to be looking for more fossils and more bones like that. And actually they did, um, if you excuse me, ah, Dr. Uh, Dom did some research. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the National Wildlife Federation actually funded a study in 1974 where they actively went out and looked and found no Sasquatch Yeti anomalous primate bones. Now, a little note, uh, someone who, who, who is has dug up dinosaur bones. I actually work with um, the L.A. County Museum of Natural History, and yearly we go on a dig to New Mexico uh, to excavate uh, late Cretaceous dinosaur bones. We haven't published it yet, so I'm not going to say which ones they are, but that's that's the general idea. I'm not used to this. I keep hitting the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Rookie. But, um, as far as things that help with preservation, um, environments that help with preservation, if you are preserved in an area that's muddy, if you're preserved in an area that tends to be wet, and has quick burial. The quicker you are buried, the better the preservation is. If stuff sits out for a long time, what's going to happen is it's going to become weathered, which is where sun and water and stuff will cause the bones to crack and break. And I'm sure if you saw like a deer skull laying around, you can tell if it's old because it, lo it looks like hell. There's lots of cracks in it and stuff like that. Um, so the quicker it's buried, typically the better it is. Now, after it's buried, there's a process that's called uh, diagenesis, which means that the fossil's broken down uh, based on soil characteristics or things in the soil. So you'd have to not have that. Uh, so I'm going to say this. Does the in large animals don't preserve as much as small animals? So you're right about that in that they can be dispersed because there's not as many of them. Mm -hmm. So the fewer carcasses the fewer fossils you're going to find and the fewer bodies you're going to find. That's true. But also, there is a cumulative effect you have to think about here. So if this primate, anomalous primate, Yeti, Sasquatch, whatever, has been on in North America for thousands upon thousands of years, which is what they speculate because all the old cultures mm -hmm. and stuff. So humans have been on what, North America for like 10,000 years. So I believe that now they're saying much longer, but let's let's go with the old school one of like around 10,000 years. And they have they have legends and stories. That means that we've accumulated 100 to 300 carcasses a year for 10,000 10, years. years. That's a lot of bones. And we must not find a single one. I, and I, yet we find. But no, we also need to look about a control here. You have other animals of similar size that are in these areas. You have brown bear, you have black bear, you have elk, you have deer. Now, the populations might not be the same, but you definitely find all those bones. I do have a question uh, along these lines. Would the bones be that different from one species to another where you'd look at it and that was my question too. see a visible difference in it where it would be worth would picking know? it up? Well, here's the thing. and that, Now, that's, that's the part where we go from why science doesn't investigate Bigfoot is because we don't know what we're looking for. So what science typically does is you find some something, some evidence, you form a hypothesis to test that evidence, and you go from there, and it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds. But what we have as our evidence has mostly been eyewitness, and the eyewitness things have been, I think, fuzzy is a fair thing to say. W would you all agree that they've, you know, nothing has been crystal clear where you have fingerprints and you know, like measurements of the skull? It's Bigfoot all is blurry. Big Bigfoot <laughs> is blurry. He's blurry. What What if that's his natural defense? It's just blurry. Maybe. So when you take a picture of so him, like it looks like he's yeah. like the predator. Yeah, he has like, like that kind of blurry. invisible thing. Well, that's alien, <laughs> alien Bigfoot, and the bones yeah. just dissolve when it hits uh, Earth air. Well, <laughs> if we let, okay, so if we assume. <laughs> That that's not the case. So let's just assume that for now. I'm not saying it's possible, but if we assume that's not the case and we assume it is a primate, we have some idea of what we're looking for. And we should be able to distinguish it from humans if, if we are assuming it's not human or not some sort of weird human. And definitely different from all the large ungulates and carnivores, which are the hooved animals and the bears and wolves and stuff that are out there. So we need to find something that is find something first and be able to distinguish how different it is from the fauna that you'd expect to see there. And we just haven't gotten there yet. Now, don't get me wrong. And I want to say this. 
if we found a Bigfoot skull or some sort of like large primate skull, that would be awesome. I would love to see it. I, 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 I know people at the, the Smithsonian Human Origins Program. They'd be like, wow, this would be awesome. But we, we, we don't have that. And that's, that's, that's sad. So that's, that's my opinion. If, if Mr. Chris's theory is right about it being a forest spirit, then two things would be like proved or disproved. One, we've been talking about bones like for 10 minutes. And if it's a forest Sorry. spirit and it dies, if it's a forest spirit and it dies, it's not going to leave any bones. And if you take a picture of it, if it's a forest spirit, ghosts can't be that crystal clear. So it would be blurry if it was a forest spirit. Wow, you uh, you stumped all the adults. I guess the show is over. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us, K-Man. <laughs> Give him that mic so he can drop it. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> That's and we're out. Okay. Good point. I don't, That's a great point. That is a great point. I guess um, you'd have to believe in magic if that was true. Well, or I mean, there are, there are a lot of documented cases spirit. of <laughs> shamanic type of uh, things where they say that the big that Bigfoot is a... Is a, a you know, a forest spirit. Let's so, go to Bigfoot yeah. expert. Is that possible? Everything's possible, Job. Well, I know that. I mean, is it probable, I guess, is the correct terminology? I think some sightings could be attributed to that, yes. Oh, all right. So you, we're talking about bones. What's your uh, input on the bones as a as our Sasquatch expert? <laughs> <laughs> it's like blowing my mind that I'm the Sasquatch expert right now. Um, I believe that there has been documented cases of like chimps and other animals burying their dead so I, it's not out of my realm of possibility for that to be the case here that they could be burying their dead and if you're prancing through the woods you know unless you're digging up everything constantly how are you ever going to find anything that's a, i mean that's a really interesting point and i've only run across that one other time where the the possibility or the thought of of a of a Sasquatch species or a anomalous, you know, primate burying their dead. Uh, and that's really interesting, I think, because that, you know, that would, that to me would say there's a cultural aspect to the Bigfoot community, not, not the Bigfoot human community or, <laughs> you know, but the, uh, the Sasquatch community itself would have to, you know, for some reason, a Sasquatch would have to understand death and, and want to, uh, bury its dead. So I think that that comes with a lot of culture, which is, I think, a, a conversation in itself almost. Um, or it enjoys its solitude because, when you bury a body, you're going to hide that decaying odor. So you're not going to get all the other predators coming into where you live with your babies and everything else. So that's another possibility for me. Very smart. And, and I honestly, I didn't really, th I, I had one little note here about it. Um, you know, the, the possibility of, of them burying their dead, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say because I don't know if we know enough about, you know, I think that would be something maybe we would discover after we discover the actual creature and how they live. And I mean, I think one of the things that I'd like to touch on later in the show, I won't do it now, but what happens when we do discover it or if we do discover it, I should say, uh, there's going to have to be a lot of protection in place for these animals uh, moving forward if and Definitely. when it does uh, come to fruition. Um, I'd like to just, if, if you don't mind, to just jump back to what Dominic was saying about the bones and everything else. I just want to throw some facts out there about Gigantopithecus blackie, which would support the North American ape theory. Uh, this creature was lived, it was about 10 foot tall, uh, lived in Asia until about 100,000 years ago. 10 foot tall creature, about 1,000 pounds. Um, it lived for approximately not over a 9 million year span. So, uh, that's a significant amount of time. We've only been ever able to uncover, uh, skull fragments and jaw bones and teeth from that animal. So we're talking about a 10 foot animal weighing a thousand pounds that lived for 9 million years, disappeared a hundred thousand years ago. And all we have are some skull fragments, some jaw bones and some teeth. So I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility if a Sasquatch is only, if the population is 20,000 years old, 10,000 years old, that we would not have discovered uh, more of that creature than we have of Gigantopithecus blackie. My, my response to that would be, if 
you're assuming that Sasquatch is extinct and is a descendant of Gigantopithecus. Absolutely. That's perfectly reasonable to say it might have come across. We just might not have found the parts be- because we haven't found many of them to begin with. That's fine. But we're that's not the argument that the Bigfoot people are saying. They're saying that they're they're out there right now. So that's different. So that changes the argument. If you tell me, let's say, at the end of the last Ice Age or at the end of the Pleistocene, there were Gigantopithecus or other Pongin. So uh, Gigantopithecus is very closely related to the um, orangutan. And that is uh, part of the genus Pongo, which is, and it belongs to the group uh, Pongine. Okay. If we have a Pongin that made it over here, and then went extinct, let's say, at the end of the Pleistocene. Yeah, that, that, that's fine, and we just haven't found it. But now you have to talk about all those characteristics and say you have a 10-foot tall, how many pounds did you say? 1,000 pounds. 1,000 pound population of animals roaming around that no one's run into except for a few isolated, except for these isolated sightings. Sure. No bones have been found. And we're not talking about fossils. We're talking about bones. One could die today, and the bones would fall on the ground. That actually switches it in the other direction. So if you're saying that there might have been Gigantopithecus descendants in North America and they died out in the past you know, 10,000 years, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But that they're here today, that actually goes in the opposite direction because now we got to figure out what, you gotta, if this is 1,000 pounds. So this animal needs to eat and support a body mass of 1,000 pounds. It needs to have populations that are breeding with enough genetics diversity to – to be healthy so they this animal is eating a lot so it is influencing the ecosystem a lot and if we don't have evidence of that influence let alone influence uh, evidence of scat feces bones or something that totally swings the argument in the other direction thousand pound creature make a gigantic dump yeah yeah that's very true does a sasquatch how poop in the woods that that's what it is though if there's bears and other things in that population well i think jenny you bring up a good point because i think if you stumbled across a few bones or a, a pile of scat, if you're just the if you're just a layman or a, you know if you're if if you're not a scientist specifically out no. there <laughs> searching for a pile of Sasquatch <laughs> scat, then you would never know. I can't imagine you would. You may not even know that it's scat. You might you know just you might confuse it for a pile of mushrooms or something who knows <laughs> right but right. uh yeah I, I i agree i think you'd have to be a, a you know a scientist actually looking to discover that and if i mean i guess the what let's talk about what is the evidence we do have which is our footprints right Here so we, we have go. chris's footprints this is why we brought chris in this is right. what i want you to argue against tom so all right but, Listen closely. but but i love this because <laughs> there um i there, there's definitely something to this because it Listen, I can put a gorilla suit on. I'm a pretty big dude. And uh, I can walk around, and I'll bet you I can make a very convincing Bigfoot hoax. So here I am. I'm, I'm a believer that there is a creature out there that and that warrants more scientific ex- exploration. But I know that I could probably create a pretty enticing hoax let's, let's of this. Let's ask the expert. Could he create an enticing hoax? Would he entice you? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Chris. I just want to stop there. <laughs> no, no worries. I appreciate your honesty, Jenny. <laughs> Personally, I think caveman with no shirt on would make an excellent juvenile Sasquatch. He's walking around. I could, I could carry him. I could carry him through the forest. <laughs> uh, it's great. Uh, what did I want to? Oh, uh, footprints. Uh, Doctor Jeff uh, Meldrum, who is at Idaho State University. Yes. Oh, geez, here he goes. I gotta get naked every podcast, or it doesn't count. Man, <sighs> oh, you gotta show <laughs> off, right? You gotta right show back. off. Keep talking about smart people stuff. If I uh, <laughs> if I pull this shirt off, you're not gonna get it on the video. Oh, videos down, videos down. Need wide lens, wide lens, wide lens, lens. fisheye lens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a few floating around the studio somewhere, but we won't we won't get into that. I think I think what's uh, Really interesting to me, and and Dr. Jeff Meldrum, who has taken a lot of heat over the years uh, from Idaho State University. He's a doctor of anthropology. He also does occupational therapy, uh, physical therapy, and he is an expert on foot morphology and locomotion. So uh, he holds currently somewhere in the in the you know the realm of three hundred footprint casts in in his office, and 
even he will come out and say, listen, when you see one, you can tell because uh, people, animals, they don't walk with all their weight and flat footed. You would have to pound your feet. So you can almost tell. He's like, you get to the point where you can tell if there is a clever hoax or somebody's right. cut a footprint out of, you know, a piece of wood or whatever and gone out there and stamped it into the yeah. forest, right? So he's gotten to a point where he can immediately debunk uh, that type. What he. What he says and what's interesting to him are the are the casts that come in and, and some of the casts that he's been out in the field looking at where he's seen, obviously, the walking, uh, large strides, five to six foot sometimes in length. Uh, he can tell when a Sasquatch is standing, 45-degree angles. He's found footprints uh, from each other, which uh, suggests that the animal is turning to look behind it. More importantly, I think uh, what was interesting to me, and, and he said the same thing, is the running or the climbing uh, prints that are casted uh, with unique, um, with, with yes, with unique identifiers, kind of like a fingerprint uh, for us, but also suggests the the fact that the animal's toes are gripping, mm -hmm. and, and that to him was an indicator that that was more interesting and, and more significant finding because in order to hoax a running gripping digit uh type of a of a cast you would actually have to have something that had movable digits that size some sort of mechanical device that would have move, movable digits and then still create the fingerprint type effect that you see uh from the pressure points on those so to me that's very interesting and what i like about the way that jeff uh dr meldrum t approaches it is he says listen i'm saying that without looking at this and saying we don't know what it is that means it warrants more science we wouldn't have gotten to where we are now if we find something and just say ah no chance Right. Let's throw it out the window. So it's not the fact that there are footprint, you know, casts that are made. Some of them, I'm sure, are a hoax. And he'll tell you the same thing. What's interesting to me is those unique identifiers on the feet, the pressure and then the, uh, you know, any kind of toe gripping or digit gripping you see in some of those casts. Uh, actually, to comment on that, and to your credit and his credit, what was his name again? I uh, Dr. Jeff Meldrum. Meldrum. Well, to Meldrum's credit, and it, you know, as, assuming that that's what he was saying, he, uh, <laughs> well, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not saying. I just, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. interpreting it correctly. Um, he's basically saying is we have some evidence, and it should be scrutinized more. And I agree with that 100, percent which says something about the fact, the fact that, you know, the scientific community doesn't take it as seriously as maybe they could. I, I'm, willing, I'm willing to absolutely give you that. And, uh, so where that is, is he's he has some evidence and he's developed a hypothesis. I'm not going to be convinced it's Bigfoot until that hypothesis is tested. The fact that it hasn't been tested by the scientific community, I will admit, is something that could be easily rectified. And it, that's a matter of not principled science. It's a matter of priority. And that's... Politics. That hey, gets, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that gets a little beyond. You Sounds know. like when Fanduzzi gets that money, it's time to make a, a Fanduzzi reality show. Huh? I would love to create a grant program to find a Sasquatch. No, to just to research this this footprint. Well, well, yeah, I, I'd like to do that. And and what I was very happy to read because when I did a little research to come on the show, because I'm not a Bigfoot guy, I'm a reptile guy. Uh, I was looking for are there any studies published in credible scientific journals, you know, that, that have that where they critically look at Sasquatch evidence. And I found one and it was in a very good journal. It's a, I believe it's the Proceedings of the Royal Society. Uh, I could be mistaken though. I, but I do know the author was from Oxford. His name is, uh, it's Sykes and a bunch of his colleagues. 2014 it came out. And this is a legitimate peer reviewed scientific study looking at Sasquatch. It wasn't looking at feet. It was looking at hair. And the way I see it is if we did this with the footprints, I'll accept whatever we find. Sure. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about this study because I, I, it really, it really, it really, it was encouraging. It made me seem like this isn't, a, you know, this isn't conspiracy theory thing. This is something that we could test. So. Well, you just blew K-Man's whole show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, if it's not a conspiracy theory, we're. Well, well, if you want it to be a conspiracy, <laughs> you, you need to say it's being covered up. You need to say that someone's coming in and like. Oh, I got yeah, that yeah, covered yeah. up. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I didn't yeah. mean to, I didn't before, mean to cut you off. before the horse, right? All right. <laughs> so um, it was a great study, actually. So Sykes et al. 2014. What they did is 
So as I'm sure you've heard, the evidence includes footprints and all kinds of other stuff as well as hair, right? So there's all these collections of anomalous primate hair, Bigfoot Yeti from old world, new world, you name it. Okay, cool. So what they did is, and and what I read is people were extremely willing, which it's credit to the Bigfoot community, not the Bigfoot population, but the Bigfoot. The Foot, research community. The, re, the, big, the cryptozoology sure. community. Yeah, they were like, yeah, yeah, check this hair out. So what they did is they, they took all this hair and they did a bunch of genetic studies on it to determine, and they compared it to the gene banks and now we have so much dna we we have it's not going to be hard and what they found is none of the hair that was attributed to sasquatch yeti etc was actually sasquatch or yeti or anything that would be considered unknown with one exception the exception is this (laughs) they found a bear they knew it's a bear and they know it was closely related to the polar bear but it was in the Himalayas. Hmm. There are no polar bears there. So what they determined is there might be a bear related to an ancestor of the polar bear that split off that might be living in the Himalaya area. Maybe. We don't know. So they didn't discover evidence for Sasquatch, but they may have discovered evidence for another large mammal, sure. which is really right. cool. Sure. So, so this doesn't help the Bigfoot argument, but what it says is, is well, that it doesn't really hurt it though either. Doesn't hurt it. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. What it, what it says is, is now the researchers are taking it. Uh, took it. Someone took it seriously and analyzed it that way. And I think the more we do this, the more we can move forward. I like a good scientist shouldn't be. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, entrenched in the result. The result should be the result. Whatever you get, you get. That's the way it should sure. work. It's right. the discovery that matters. Yeah. So, so that's why I'm not sitting here being like, oh, Bigfoot's stupid. You know, because <laughs> you know, it's not. Because it's not. There's so many things that we thought were stupid that turned out to be true. And there's so many things we thought were true that further research was said we were wrong. And I think that's yeah. awesome because that means we have a direction we can go to. That's what this show is all about. Yeah. Right. It's about government sh- covering everything up. <laughs> 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 I do have a question for you, Jen. Yes. Uh, you obviously totally believe in Bigfoot. What would be the nearest ancestor to Bigfoot? What does it descend from? Is it kind of its own creature? What What is the like ancestry of Bigfoot? I would say it comes from the population of the Gigantopithecus over in China. Maybe come over the Bering Strait um, and just... That would be my guess. You can tell your expert because I couldn't even say Pythicus. Gigantopithecus? Gigantopithecus. So, 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 Brian Marciniak. No expert. <laughs> I am no expert. Yeah. Let's just be clear about so, that. So I think that's my new nickname. <laughs> Gigantopithecus? <laughs> yes, I like it. Well, it <laughs> didn't they have Christopher Walken play a Gigantopithecus in that new Jungle Book movie? Am I, you, you, did you see it? Or am I like no, nerdy or nor child? No, you have like. Of course, we saw it. You just were sleeping. Mm. Well, in, in the new jungle, I watched it on the plane. Christopher Walken plays uh, plays King Louis, right? The the ape is oh, like, the orangutan? Ooh, ooh, yeah, but he's not an orangutan. He literally says, "I'm a I'm a gigantopithecus," and he's a, basically an. It looks like an orangutan that fits in this room. It's great. Yet he sounds like he's from Brooklyn. He's like, <laughs> "Ooh ooh ooh, I want to be like you." Ooh ooh, and he just goes oh on goodness. and on. I want to walk like you, and it just goes on and on. It's ridiculous, awesome. but uh, but yeah. So that is awesome. So w- the reason I bring it up is because you know I'd heard tangentially of Gigantopithecus, but I'm no anthropologist, so I was like, whatever. I don't really know much about it. But after that movie came out, all these people were like, Gigantopithecus, tell us about it. What's that? And I was like, Why do you guys keep talking about it? It's like Christopher Walken is one. And I was like, Well, I gotta see it now. <laughs> well, see now, see we need a we need a a Sasquatch uh, advocate that is like a Christopher Walken. I mean. Like the the paranormal community has Dan Aykroyd, right? I yeah. mean, Dan Aykroyd is an avid paranormal, uh, know. you know, funding. It, it, he's a funding source for <laughs> paranormal research. So we need Christopher Walken if you're listening, and I know you are. He will be. He will be. We could use. N- yeah. Wow. Hey, if you were going to play Gigantopithecus, you got to walk the walk, <laughs> right? You got to walk the bipedal walk. Well, oh, I'm going to jump in. No, I don't I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm going to jump in. The Gigantopithecus thing. Now, we assume that Bigfoot walks on two legs. 
the lineage that walked on two legs is not Gigantopithecus' that lineage. Gigantopithecus was a knuckle walker. So the like lineage. Mickey Gaskins. What? <laughs> like Mickey Gaskins. <laughs> <laughs> got to get a Mickey Gaskins comment in every podcast. That was a per- perfect time for it. He's a black guy that poops his pants. Keep going. <laughs> Thank you oh, for that. Give, give, me, give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> so Gigantopithecus probably knuckle walked like most of the great apes do. Yeah. So that actually so the argument that Sasquatch is Gigantopithecus means it would have had to co evolve a bipedal stance. Because we our lineage, the Hominine Hominine uh, line evolved the bipedal stance. But the, the Pongan line did not. So that would mean it would have to evolve. I'm not saying it's impossible by any stretch. I'm mm. just saying there's no evidence for that. So that is why, actually, there's another argument. I believe um, they think that Sasquatch may actually, if there is a Sasquatch, may actually be uh, an offshoot more closely related to us. Could it called- be the missing link? Uh, evolution? That's, that's not a thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was saying. <laughs> that's not a thing, bro. <laughs> Damn it. I, I was- there, there's something oh, called... Uh, Par- There's something called Paranthropus. Paranthropus is a uh, an offshoot of our line. So you have the Homo line, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Homo sapien, Homo isobarensis, and then you got the Australopithecine line, and that has something called Paranthropus, which is this very bulky, bipedal, kind of gorilla-looking thing. It had a large crest in the middle of the head, which we call a mid-sagittal crest, and it probably ate like a gorilla and things like that. So that's actually, if we're going to pick the primate line that could have led to Sasquatch, I think that's probably a better choice. There's a lot of problems with it, too. So I'm not saying, oh, yeah, it is. But I'm just saying is there's there's another one, and that one actually So out of the five theories, that is theory number two, uh, which is not the Gigantopithecus yeah. North American ape line. <laughs> that is the more humanoid. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, but, but so. there's a problem with that because that line would have had to have left Africa, gone all the way across Asia, gone all the way across the Bering Strait, and come here. And we have zero evidence of that. And that so, sounds exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Maybe we took a boat. I just want that trip. I want a pizza after that. <laughs> <laughs> If they're uh, like an offshoot of the humans, are, are humans a social, um, a social species? No, I hate you. So no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I hate you too, <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm no, we're very social. We're, 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 we, yeah, we're, is, we're. Is that typical of humanoid species? Well, um, let's see. Chimpanzees are extremely social. We're obviously extremely social. Chimpanzees are extremely social. Both, um, you know, the the larger chimp and um, the bonobo. Uh, gorillas are social, very interesting kind of social hierarchy. They have what we call harems, which is where you have one giant male and a bunch of females, and and that's their situation. Like Ray's house. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Ray. <laughs> and then uh, the um, the orangutans are actually more solitary, so they're much more solitary. So. If we were to assume that the lineage that led to Sasquatch was solitary, but more likely to be of the Pongo, Pongan line. But if it was more social, it might be the more hominin line, which is odd. And I think if I remember right, the bonobo and chimp uh, lines, what you're talking about, those mm-hmm. species are almost, I think they're well over 98% identical in DNA mm-hmm. to us. So almost 99%. I was just saying that because you never see a bunch of Sasquatches together. You think they'd kind of be a social, if they're more human-like, they'd be a social species. You see a couple together. There are some stories of multiple um, sightings. Listen, I would want nothing more than to go to a Sasquatch beer blast. <laughs> that would be awesome. I'm just saying. If Do they play beer pong with a with a basketball? If they travel in groups or there's groups of them, you think there'd be more evidence of them existing. Mm-hmm. You know, they'd have a bigger impact on the environment. Because these are supposed to be giant creatures, they should be eating a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, I think even the chi- I think even chimps though live in uh, family units. Yeah, they so live in troops. That's yeah, they yeah. live in troops. Uh, you know, and they actually mark out their territory. If I remember right, it was their territories are circular, and it is, there will be overlap in territories. But though, if if the two uh, troops come together in that overlap, it actually will create warfare. Between chimps, so even though they are social, they still live in 
specific troops or specific groups. So, you know, with the Sasquatch not knowing about the Sasquatch, I think it's hard to say how it lives or how many would live in a in a society or in a troop or whatever we end up, you know, deeming their their family unit. I, I saw this excellent documentary from the 80s. It's called Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end, you, actu- last night. <laughs> <laughs> and you actually see a male Sasquatch meeting up with a family of Sasquatch. So mm. I think that's evidence for by parental care. I think that <laughs> <laughs> Parental learning, social learning, and innate behavior, right? <laughs> I'm just Very saying good. a hunt for Bigfoot, you never see the family units. Like typically, you'd, you'd think you would see multiple Sasquatches together. Not necessarily. I mean, if you have a family unit, and if the male is the scout or something, if he's out making sure there's nobody else close that's going to mess with the family, the mom is back with the babies, protecting the babies. So I don't think that they would all go out scouting together when you're trying to protect. You know your main family unit, which would be the mom and the babies. Well, uh, actually, with chimps, and and you're right about that. With chimps, what'll happen? And and this is actually this is some disturbing footage of this concerning what both of you are saying. Um, so what happens is the females all and the the babies often hang out in one area, and the males will go scout. Exactly what you described. So yeah, there is evidence to support that. If they do run into someone else, usually other scout males, they will have warfare. So both of those things actually make sense together. So what would typically happen, and I've, I've seen, I remember seeing these videos, and they're very, very disturbing. Um, I wait, do too. Wait, he, uh, actually, I believe National Geographic or something oh, like I that. I can't wait to watch that. Yeah. If so was here, have so it you right see now. this 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 ma- this line of male chimpanzees knuckle walking out to just survey the area. They find, I believe, another ro- a rogue male or a bunch of males from another troop, and they fight. And they actually kill each other. And this is a little gruesome, but they mutilate the bodies, etc. I'm not going to go into details for obvious reasons. Um, and they do things like that. So they have a very militaristic kind of mindset. But yeah, you're right. The males tend to go out and the females tend to hang back. So you wouldn't find them all wandering around right. together if they were scouting. Now, if they were migrating, then that would be a different story altogether. So yes, That's not necessarily different, though. Wouldn't mm-hmm. the male go and find the safe route before bringing the rest of the family i actually don't know that maybe could be <laughs> okay yeah. you said sasquatch the sasquatch hunter like hunt for while you were talking about hunting for groups <laughs> how if if there are sasquatch hunters hunters are they hunters who like hunters who shoot deer or hunters just to put it on the internet because if they're hunters who like the ones that try that kill game why wouldn't you see any dead Bigfoot? Oh, snap. I think what Forrest is saying is why don't hunters, when they're in the forest, run into any evidence of Bigfoot? Since they're hunting deer, they're being quiet, they're hitting well. Something Most like of that, the right, BFRO Forrest? sightings are from hunters. What is BFRO? The Bigfoot Researchers Research. Association. Yeah, okay. Organization. Oh, man, I did no re- and I think there's a lot of sightings documented where hunters have had or seen a Sasquatch and had them in their sights and can't pull the trigger. You know, you don't know what this thing is. If it is a bipedal creature, as right. described, and do you pull the trigger? I mean, that you know, that now it becomes a moral issue right. more so than it does a scientific issue. The hunter's not going out to solve science. The hunter's going out to put a, a, a head on the wall and feed his family for the rest of, for so long, right? And if you run into a bipedal 800-pound creature, you may not pull that trigger unless you're being attacked. Yeah, I also Bigfoot hang him on my wall. God yeah. damn. I'd also, think famous. about it. Eight, an 800-pound bipedal creature, there are ones that are out there in the south, in the northwest. They're called grizzly bears. Better not and miss. You don't shoot. You know, you right. shoot a grizzly bear unless you hit it in the face. Well, actually, if you hit it in the face, you might not even kill it. But unless you hit it in the sweet spot, it's going to turn around and be very, very angry. So I could totally see that reluctance. Like, nah. I've heard that before, oh. that <laughs> some hunters' stories have been, I did not have a weapon strong enough to where I thought that that thing would go down. That's fair. That's totally fair. So, Half a ton? Forget it. You know? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are we thinking that Bigfoots are intelligent then? Absolutely. Like rudimentary intelligent or 
thinking intelligent, like human thinking intelligent. Well, from the lineages that have been discussed, uh, orangutan are pretty intelligent. They're they're very intelligent. So that's that's a very intelligent animal. If we're going with the Gigantopithecus line, if we're going anything closer to us, we're just getting more and more and more intelligent. If it is Paranthropus, if it's Paranthropus, that animal probably could use tools. Probably, I'm not mm-hmm. saying 100, percent but could use tools. And that, if you can use tools, that's a sign of intellect. So, if we're unless it's a spirit or an alien or Loch Ness or something like that, um, it's going to be pretty smart. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think it'd be even smarter if it's an alien. <laughs> yeah. Probably, right? What are you gonna say for us? If if uh this if this um maybe not so severe rainstorm makes it through the editing, we apologize. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm kind of wondering where my husband and my children are. <laughs> they're they're probably getting wet right now. Poor Jaina. Well, if the Bigfoot uh. is a forest spirit, maybe it's creating all this rain. Oh, but if maybe. a if a Bigfoot is intelligent, is it actually trying to stop us from finding it? Is that is it hiding itself? I think that's entirely possible. If it I is, mean, if you figure there's hundreds of job. millions of acres of forest in the United States, all of that's not explored. So there's probably several areas where they could be. And regardless of the level of intelligence, I mean, I think intelligence would provide you with tool use or shelter capacity, you know, building a, a, a specific type of shelter. Um but all of the animal species has a fight or flight type of a mechanism. So uh, if a Sasquatch knows that it doesn't want, if it sees a troop of human beings and its first instinct is, well, I'm going to have to fight or flight. I mean, that's just a regular uh, animalistic instinct. I don't think it's necessarily specific to any one species. But, uh, you know, I mean, there's been documented cases of, you know, specific shelters that they've built or what they are allegedly a Sasquatch shelter. I don't think anybody, you know, has any evidence of whether or not it is. Are they interesting structures? Yes. I mean, it's hard to say, you know, who would put something like that together out. Right. Joe Rogan called know, bullshit on those. I did <clears throat> the little research. I watched Joe Rogan. He said that was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I watched this show. He hunted for Bigfoot for weeks, and he didn't find anything. If Bigfoot, if Bigfoots really don't want us to, really want to hide from us, how come in a few of the videos or records shot, they're not running away? Sometimes they're just you just see videos of them walking, wouldn't they? If they were super, if they were like super intelligent, wouldn't they be trying to run away from the video or the camera? Probably that's not assuming, all super intelligent. That's assuming they even see the video being recorded because most of the time they're from far away shots. That might be a level of fear, too. I mean, I'm going to, I'm certainly going to run if uh, one of you guys are coming at me, right? Or uh, an elephant or a rhinoceros, but um, I may not run the other way if, uh, you know, if there's a, I don't know, whatever's half the size of me, which is a lot Forest. of creatures. Forest is about a third of the size of you. <laughs> so, or an yeah, but I think he can take me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think that's that might be, you know, based on your level of, of fear. And I also think that natural camouflage plays effect here. We see that in the animal kingdom all over the place where, you know, uh, camouflage is just a natural line of defense. And, hey, I mean... There's a reason that they put those uniforms together when when we send our troops somewhere, because uh, it's hard to see when you're walking through the forest. There could be something sitting right next to you, and you have no idea. You know, as a matter of fact, I mean, this is a great example. I was down in the Carolinas last week, and I played around a golf, and the starter literally said, "Don't if you hit your ball in the woods here, don't go after it, because the copperhead looks exactly like." The the leaves on the ground and the pine needles. You'll never see a copperhead, and you could be standing right next to it. So I think that the natural, you know, the the camouflage is a natural line of defense. So uh, um, camouflage or, or crypsis, as, as it's known, um, for and it happens with a lot of a lot of prey animals as well as predators. I mean, you have the the I mean, zebra stripes are essentially there, so you camouflage with other zebras. That's actually why they're there. And, you, of course, there's plenty of examples like stick insects and frogs that looks like leaves and blah, 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 blah. So we all know those. Then, of course, there are predators such as the tiger. The tiger blends into the grass so you don't see it until you're dead. And that's essentially the idea behind that. Um, 
Sasquatch being cryptic, there would have to be some sort of what we call selection pressure to drive it to Crypsis. So there would have to be something in its history that would have killed off the ones that are obvious, making it camouflage. That's that's how it works. That's how evolution works. You have some variability. Some variability is better than others. And the variability that's better than others survives, and the other ones die out. That, that, that's how it works. Evolution is facilitated, unfortunately, by death. So there would have to have been some sort of pressure that would cause Sasquatch to become as cryptic, as well hidden as it is. And by the way, this is one of the most well hidden things ever. So if this thing naturally evolved to be the most hidden thing ever to outsmart almost all of humanity, there would have to be some major driving force as to why. And, and if you're dealing with aliens or the hollow earthers, they came out and that's why they evolved to be blurry. So there's no clear pictures of them. The camouflage is actually blur. <laughs> wow, that would be pretty. Awful. If you guys have not seen the late great Mitch Hedberg's Bigfoot uh, segment, you gotta YouTube it. I'm just gonna throw that in there as I a side note. That. Is that, no, is Mitch, he- Mitch Hedberg, thing? Bigfoot. He talks about how Bigfoot is blurry, and you will you will love it. It's classic. <laughs> I'm checking that out as soon as we're done here. Before we get the lingerie girl on. <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? What's going on? <laughs> We're having a lingerie girl on after you guys. Oh, okay. It's you... not me. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting for the big lingerie. It's to come me. <laughs> 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 it is me. Uh, I, I, I do have a question for you. Are you're the Sasquatch expert, expert? Are they normally hostile or are they normally friendly or somewhere in between? I think that, that, well, there's been reports of both. There's been reports of um, hunters in cabins that have come under attack. Um, you know, rock throwing and things like that. So I feel maybe they're upset that their territory is being infringed upon. I mean, there's other ones who come into camps and steal stuff out of coolers. I mean, it's like <laughs> I just think it's probably both. I think... I guess if you push enough buttons, regardless of what animal it is, you could become hospital, hostile very quickly. I guess what we're saying is uh, we have a possibility of a world takeover the way we're talking about these things. They oh, no, there's only like 5,000 of them. They're intelligent. They can use uh, items. A- what if they grab all our guns in camps and they take over the world like Planet of the Apes? All right, so we have, we've got the... <laughs> so this is number four now. We are now on the fourth theory, which is Bigfoot, uh, the Bigfoot alien theory. No, no, it's just Thanks the hostile. It evolved on Earth. <laughs> Like Planet of the Apes. Yeah. <laughs> well. But, I mean, a male protecting his family, a mother protecting their babies, those are going to be hostile, you know, animals. Whereas, if left alone, they may not be. So they're like raccoons if you leave them alone and Terminator if you fuck with them. <laughs> that, I would go with that. I would agree with that. Well, just to, just to kind of reestablish my position as it probably <laughs> is not Bigfoot. <laughs> Is because all of the things you said, with the exception of the intelligence and the guns and the blurriness, almost all of these things bears can do. Right. Bears will come into camp and no, steal absolutely. your stuff. Absolutely. Bears will kill you when you attack when you attack their when they think you're attacking their cubs. Uh, young bears tend to be in trees. Large bears tend to be on ground. When bears are threatened, they stand up, and when they stand up, they're ten feet tall and brown and hairy and scary. Uh, it's I could ju- I'm not. All I'm going to say is this. Is it possible that many, if not most, of the Bigfoot sightings are bear sightings? I would have to argue yes. Oh, absolutely. We would have to rule out, in order for us to prove the strong word, to give hard evidence that Bigfoot existed, aside from anatomical evidence or behavioral evidence, it would have to show that the sighting was not, it was definitely not a bear. And there's some that, you know are you know pushing that but i'm just saying like what would convince me is if you can give me a sighting where like there's no there's no way this was a bear or a dude in a suit if you can do that then then you you got me much further over on that end than i am see you know and i'm i'm already over there i do think that there's something you know with the footprint evidence and and some of the video evidence uh i think it warrants a lot more exploration what i'm not ready to say is and you'll see a lot of these on the animal planet shows and this i like the shows because it brings a it brings it out 
into public knowledge, right? So you sometimes you you it may not be done the right way. It's certainly not the scientific way to do it, but it, at least it provides some sort of uh, what a conduit to ask questions. Mm-hmm. My problem is when they start to say, well, hey, this was a Sasquatch that was pounding on this house, so it must be an inbred Sasquatch because because oh, yeah. <laughs> other Sasquatches that aren't inbred wouldn't pound on a house. So, well, wait a minute. We First, we need to find some hair before we decide whether or not it's inbred or, or not yeah. inbred, right? So, they but I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, stuff like that just drives me crazy because you have to actually find the, the po- a, a piece of the population before you can you know, predetermine whether it's an inbred Sasquatch, right? I mean, they've already talked about what's going on inside the family unit, which is ridiculous. Um, but I think it, I, I definitely, I, I'm a little bit further in, I, I think, with with all the thousands of sightings. And, I mean, even the brown bears, I do agree. I think most of the sightings are probably mm-hmm. a bear or some sort oh, of yeah, creature that, sure. you know, a person who's walking through the woods may have never experienced, right? I mean, I, I spent a summer up in Alaska, and I'll tell you this. You can hike around Anchorage for weeks at a time and never see a bear, right. ever. But if you go to the Kenai Peninsula... You better be ready because there are brown bear everywhere. I mean, there were 11 sitting in one small pocket of the river just fishing for salmon. So I I go hiking in Alieska. I haven't seen a bear near Anchorage in in months, and all of a sudden there's a brown bear. At first, you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. So I come back from, you know, from the Kenai and you see them all over the place. And then all of a sudden you're near Anchorage and you see a, a black, it was a black bear. And I was like, what the hell is that? Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, after just witnessing all these bears, you'd think my mind would immediately say, oh, it's a bear. Right. But it doesn't look the same. It's dark. It's moving through the forest. You're scared. You're scared. <laughs> right. And and your mind plays tricks on you. Right. But now when I say, OK, with some video evidence and some photo evidence, which, again, may be blurry. <laughs> Thank you, Mitch Hedberg, for that. Uh, but with all of the footprints and all of the eyewitnesses and all of the experiences, I think that I lean more towards the side that there is something else going on there, and it it definitely warrants more exploration. So we've been talking about National Geographic, right? So I was watching some channel like that. They had this one creature that was like a lizard man. Do any of you think that is real, or do you think those are just all a hoax? Hoax. A lizard man? Or like a large reptile that's standing on two hind legs. I'm not familiar with that, but I'm going to look into it now. <laughs> we just launched another conspiracy to debunk. Uh, that, that might be the best uh, that <laughs> I've never met a lizard man. I have met um, a 160-pound lizard, though, um, at, the Florida, at the Florida Zoo. I did my graduate research on, uh, on Komodo dragons. So cool. And there was a 160-pound Komodo dragon at the time. His name was Jack. He was from <laughs> Indonesia. And they named him Jack, and in Indonesia they named him Jack because they said he looked like Michael Jackson. It was probably the lack of a nose. <laughs> That's great. Wow. <laughs> anyway. Was it an albino Komodo dragon? It was. It, it was started actually, off dark and it turned albino. The right? one white glove <laughs> threw everybody in Indonesia <laughs> off. <laughs> But no, I've never heard of a lizard person or a or a reptile individual that could stand on two legs. Uh, to to back Forrest up, I have seen some of the shows that that talk about cave dwell. It's more. It seems more of like a cave dwelling type of thing. And and I don't know. I don't. I don't spelunk. <laughs> if you can tell by my figure, my svelte figure is not built for Chris spelunking. Gets going into the first hole. <laughs> 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 Someone jump on my head. <laughs> Butter me up. Um, <laughs> There's a lobster loose. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know, Forrest. I don't know about the lizard man. There's such small amount of documentation on any of that that it's hard to. It's hard to say. Uh, it, it it sounded pretty fake to me. Like the report was, this one cook was coming home and it saw this weird thing with red eyes and it clawed into her car. That must have been like a nightmare or something. There's, I've yeah, never seen. I would agree with you. That similar. sounds a little uh, far fetched to me. Did you say it was a cook? I don't know. It was something like it she wasn't was coming Coach home. Flores, was it? I think I know. Or you're gonna... like, what were they cooking? 
She was, <laughs> were they cooking food? Or? She was coming home from like some isolated. I was raise, she was she was coming home from some like job. I don't remember if it was. Was a it a rave? <laughs> was but uh, <laughs> may, but uh, maybe 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 it's that all a lizard person. <laughs> may, maybe that would explain why it's so out there. Are you trying to um, insinuate that the reliability of eyewitnesses is not that good? I, I would agree with that. 100%. Well, I I only heard one eyewitness, and I didn't very right. tr- I didn't very much trust it for Lizard Man. But some of the Bigfoot eyewitnesses sound pretty, like. Scary. Yeah, it's like you you They're hear pretty the incredible. Real. Yeah. Some I, of them. I don't can know. Be we uh we had a guy on my podcast, Brian Marciniak, and he's actually a pretty reputable person. Brings in lots of huge shows. He brought in John Jones. He puts together lace up kickboxing fights, and he said he saw Sasquatch. But he saw Sasquatch when he was a young kid, and uh, he just saw him by the water here in yeah Ledgeworth. He was just in a pond, bending over, drinking water. I just told him it was probably a hairy gay guy <laughs> trying to pick up the little boys. Oh boy! But I mean, uh, honestly, I didn't know Ledgeworth was known for that. I, yeah, I wasn't yeah. aware. You better stay away from the parks. That's where my friends hang out. It is <laughs> the grand. They call it the Grand Canyon of the of the East, right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so is there any Bigfoot sightings around here besides for Brian? Adirondacks, I believe, right? I think that's the closest one yeah. that I've heard. And then Erie. Ledgeworth. Down in Ryan, down yeah. in, in near Erie, Pennsylvania, there's been some sightings. Like Allegheny yeah. area. But I would say that, uh, uh, to begin back to my original point, that eyewitnesses are the least reliable source of information we can have. Even the blurry photographs, I, they're very unreliable. Even It doesn't even take into account that the police, when uh, they police interrogate people, you know, they get different sides of the story from the exact same witness. Right. You know, it's different well, hour by hour, you know. And I'd love to I'd love to jump in here because this this is where the problem is between society, community and the scientific society because there's so much crap out there now that you could it's let's just say this. If I told you guys that I had an alien in my basement, Right, and I could come up with anything you wanted. You're either gonna believe me. What if I really have an alien in my basement? We'd be There's gonna be friends. people in this room that will be like, "Yeah, it's fake." Even if I have pictures, even if I cut a fingertip off and throw it on the right. uh, on the on the desk here, somebody's gonna tell me that that's not a real fingertip or whatever it is. There's always going to be because there's so much junk out there. And that's the problem. And that's the difficult part for the scientific community is they got to weed through all of this crap that's out there and try and figure out, well, what should we be researching? So again, and I think that goes back to the, you know, the inbreeding in the Sasquatch community. Like they should never say that until we actually have some sort of evidence of, of a Sasquatch first. Right. Forest. I know one fictional al- alien that would be kind of mean to cut the finger off of. Who's that? E.T. Oh. It would ru- it'd ruin the whole movie. <laughs> the whole movie would be ruined. He wouldn't be able to phone home anymore. <laughs> Girl. Yeah, His whole career is over. <laughs> Spielberg hates you. A lot. <laughs> so that's great. Is intelligence how how is intelligence determined in the species, Dom? Like how there's really smart ones and dumb ones? Is that evolution? Well, see here. See here's the thing. Uh, when it comes to measuring intelligence, typically we measure intelligence based on ourselves, which is a very, to use the term, speciesist kind of view. As in, okay, we're intelligent. Therefore, how close are animals to us? And that will determine how intelligent they are. So there's typical behavioral tests such as solving problems. You know, you, you have the typical thing where the animal gets a reward if it presses one button or it gets a shock if it presses the other button, how quickly it figures that out and things like that. That's how we typically determine intelligence in other animals. Um, but now we're starting to find out that there might be other types of intelligence that we can't even understand because they they manifest themselves in different ways. Uh, now, why do things become intelligent? Essentially, what what if you want to kind of you know say intelligence intelligence the ability let's say to solve problems? Why would problem solving evolve? Problem solving would evolve based on the idea that you have that you can afford to have the hardware to do it. So you have enough food and enough energy that you can 
build a brain or build whatever you need to do that, as well as a need where being intelligent helps you survive more than not being intelligent. So, so that some, there's some sort of, you're in their environment and you're able to develop what you need to develop, um, anatomically speaking, to become intelligent. Uh, you have the resources to do so. And it's also worth the resources because being intelligent isn't better. Having this big old brain, which we all have big old brains, it's not just me. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. having our big old brains. He was co- pointing at himself. Yeah, I was pointing at myself, but I, I was just using field. myself as an example. <laughs> having this big old brain is costly. We use up a lot of energy just doing our thing. Uh, the amount we use, I think, at a resting pace, we use about 20% of our blood sugar on just thinking so that's a lot of energy now obviously that's worthwhile because it's helped us survive and thrive so organisms that are intelligent it gives them an advantage over organisms that aren't intelligent that's of the same species that aren't intelligent so that's what the pressure comes in that's essentially how it works another disadvantage of the brain that could um that could negatively affect animals is the way it adds because the because the head because the brain is the fattiest part of your body and it helps you become smarter but it would not be good for predators or prey because they know where the Probably predators yummy. or prey are coming from but it might make them slower and not as good as survi- not as good as surviving so it depends on where they're living and what the goal of their or, or what is the objective of what they're doing it depends on well so that's the effectiveness of damn the smart well, kids F- forest is, forest is absolutely right and by the way can you tell i'm not from buffalo by the way i say forest <laughs> forest <laughs> uh anyway so he's absolutely right he's talking about trade-offs and he's talking about if you're going to have a big heavy brain to generate all this intelligence the pros have to outweigh the cons. That's that's one of those things. So for an organism to be intelligent, it has to be worth all the investment. It, it definitely has to. And another thing, when you talk about head size, there's a uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of data to suggest that um, brain size in humans is limited by the size of the birth canal. So we just can't keep evolving bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger brains. Because we have to start off with a certain sized head, and mom needs to give birth to said head. And if she can't, my son missed that memo, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's an issue. And there's actually a study that came out that said, if and this is not saying we shouldn't do cesarean. I don't. I don't want this to be misinterpreted by that at all. But it's saying that cesareans have allowed for women to give birth to children with heads that are potentially larger than the birth canal would allow back in nature they just both would die which is sad but it's the way it used to work i mean death by childbirth how often that happened all the time now it never happens because of modern technology so what they think is that we're actually undoing natural selection in that aspect by allowing for cesareans now once again that's not saying we shouldn't do it i'm just saying that like that cost is a big one the, the cost of having a big head is a big one and technology is undoing it. that sounds like another show coming up <laughs> but i guess i was asking that question because i've never been around animals that weren't uh domesticated mm-hmm. like i got a really dumb dog and the new dog we got is pretty smart. I figured shit out. <laughs> when I go to work, there's really dumb people at work. You know, like dude, you always deal with that retard. There's always one guy like you can't believe that he fucking lived. Like this weller guy Rick. Like he can't figure. He's two plus two. He's got this whole big metal plate full of numbers trying to figure it out. Right. So, does that happen in nature too? Is there like really dumb creatures in nature, or is it? Do they like get killed out? Does it? Is that still a possibility? Well, like I said. In nature, if you need the intelligence and you don't have it, you're going to die. But if you don't need the intelligence and you don't have it, you're going to be fine. So that's the thing. When it comes to humans, usually the ones that aren't intelligent get killed off. I guess typically. I'm asking this question because how come we've never seen like the dumb Bigfoot, the retard, I'm <laughs> that word, Maybe those walk are into, the ones that walk are into town and go to Burger King and try and eat some shit out of the Burger King dumpster? Well, those are the inbred ones. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, those really, are the ones there's, getting caught. I mean, it sounds like a stupid, stupid thing to say, but it's true. There's always, like, the one dumb person in the in the, the group or the one that always gets killed off in nature. Where Where's well, that Bigfoot? Well, that's why, I'm, I, that's, that's, what, that's why I say, like, these Bigfoot, Yeti, the anomalous primates are all Batman. 
That they have to be all Batman. You never catch them. You never see them. They can't be caught. They can't be killed. There's no evidence of them. It's like they're all ninjas mixed with Batman mixed with Navy SEALs. Like there is no like it, you're right. If there was a, there's got to be a couple Sasquatches that mess up and we find them, but we haven't. So that makes the probability of Sasquatch existing in my mind lower because they're either really lucky or they are really, really, really amazing at outsmarting us. I know if I Sasquatch, I'd be down at the beach checking out all the hairy ladies. <laughs> <laughs> like a, with a, with a speedo. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> So, so like a Yeti on the French Riviera. <laughs> Bonjour. That's great. And those new rompers that are all... Yeah, and a romper. Facebook now. Uh. Getting back to the serious topic. Um, thank you, Forrest. The, Saswa- the Sasquatches might be so smart that even the dumb ones can outsmart humans. And then the really smart ones might be the ones using tools. And the dumb ones might be outsmarting humans just trying to survive and barely being able to survive. No, I feel like the dumb one. <laughs> Are you sure he's your kid? Well, yeah. there's a lot of my wife in him. <laughs> and I believe that's where the intelligence comes from. The intelligence oh, does sure. come from the mother. He is not a boreal. I do know that. <laughs> well, I'm going to say this because I'm still stuck on this. As long You're so smart, but as long as the head doesn't get any bigger, like Doc said, because... <laughs> This guy can't afford for the birth canals to get any bigger because I will be extinct in no time. I just want to say one thing. I wear my hat pretty tight, and when I put my hat on, it will not even go over the top of Forrest's head. His hat, his hat is already way bigger than mine. It's been like that since he was a little kid. We can hear that in the podcast. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I have a question for the uh, for the uh, Bigfoot uh, experts. Oh, God, don't. He did, he did air I quotes. did air quotes. <laughs> he did air okay. quotes for those Air quotes, things. like Dr. Evil. Not an expert. expert. Um, well, no, I, I, have I, lasers I, on their head. It, so I read something interesting on the internet, and, I, and I've never heard of it before. There's something called the Sierra Sounds, which is yes. late night calls that they attribute to anomalous primate Sasquatch, whatever. What's that all about? I didn't look into it, so. Have you heard them? I have not, no. You should. It's definitely something to listen to, and I think even some of your animal communication specialists have said, like, you know, this isn't anything that we're normally used to hearing. Does that prove anything? No. I mean, it proves that there's a sound that we've never heard before. Uh, You know, so, uh, but uh, they use, I think, some of the, like, the resource organizations use calls, whoops, yells uh uh, wood knocks they're supposed to are supposed to be a a means of communication uh between you know multiple sasquatch so yeah i mean there's definitely some interesting audio out there that is unexplained but again to your point what does that what does it mean you know something's yelling and we've never heard it i mean honestly i was talking to a friend of mine who is also part of the bigfoot community and just through talking, we just agreed that Bigfoot stuff is probably 99% bullshit. But that 1% is what keeps us, like, you know, with the ear out going, well, what is this? Why is it doing this? I've never looked into Bigfoot, so I don't necessarily know much about these midnight calls. Do Can any of you, like, describe it or what it sounds like? <laughs> no. Wrong! <laughs> Horny! <laughs> Give me Bigfoot! Pull up. Somebody pull up the Sierra sounds for him. We can we can do that. We we have the tools. Someone else keep yeah. talking. Go ahead, K. Get just put in like Bigfoot calls. Yeah, it, there's sounds. there's different ones. There's whoop. There's whoops. Right, and then yeah. there's uh, there's actual long howls. Um, you know, so there's whoops but, like. But they're whoop. like that deep guttural. Here, like I can't get that. Yeah, low. Put, put I could do it, but I'm not gonna do it. Calls I'm, at night. Finding Bigfoot. Well, no, that's them. That's not the Sierra Sounds. No? No. Look up Sierra Sounds. All right. Now, if you're Is this be, thing you on? Listen to a commercial real quick by 7th Generation. With 7th Generation Femcare, <laughs> you can keep it free and clear or, down or there. Or you can just when turn I mean the volume down. down. There, I'm <laughs> no, speaking no. specifically of vagina. <laughs> Whether you're a lady who likes pads or a gal that likes tampons, you want a sensitive touch for your sensitive lady body. 
picker. It's even better. Wow. That's my vagina jingle, y'all. I think it's I'm my vagina. Please tell me you're cutting that out. No. <laughs> Please cut that out. The team and I are searching the Canadian Rockies for evidence of Sasquatches. We're using a high-powered parabolic microphone to listen for any responses to our Sasquatch calls. That's a Squatch. Cliff, are you guys hearing that? Matt's hearing a Squatch through the parabolic. Like argument. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a, it's like a weird whooping noise, but I'm not so sure I trust that one because it sounds like just a human speaking gibberish. All right, that one might not have been it, but what did you think of that, Dom? It sounded like a human speaking gibberish, just like your son said. <laughs> 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 was that oh. it, John, or was that not no, it? No, that's it. That's oh, the, okay. the, the they call it the samurai chatter. Um, basically saying that they were in an isolated area and they were hearing this communication from whatever. I, I think it's a little bit, uh, sketchy. A little sketchy? A little sketchy. For, Forrest says a little sketchy. Go ahead. What do you think, Forrest? Um, uh, it sounds like, it definitely sounds a little bit like human gibberish. Uh, uh, after, like, it sounded like a human, it did sound like a little bit of whooping noise, like you were starting to describe before we found the video that we're going to edit out the process of that. Well, no, but, I have to edit out you saying we're going to edit out the process of editing it out. <laughs> That's a lot of editing Conspiracy. Out. But, <laughs> what did they edit out? <laughs> but it definitely, at the end, it definitely sounds like a whooping noise. In the beginning, it sounds like a person, so it's probably just... Oh, I think Chris found something. It's probably just like you said. It's probably like what you suggested to Mr. Marciniak. That's what it sounded like. It sounded like a gay guy? Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> it sounded like he's trying to scare some uh To the homosexual community away. out there, I apologize. I do not think you sound like rutting bears. Well, no, it sounds like that could... It sounds like it could be a person just trying to scare... But, but I think that's the the argument, though, is that they are very human-like in their mannerisms and their communication and what they do. And that's one of his theories. Was like the humanoid is more humanoid Sasquatch. Yeah, I think if they're so humanoid, they can they, communicate like we'd that. We'd see more so. family units, and you'd run into yeah. um, colonies of Bigfoot. Just like he was saying with the bears when he was in Anchorage. There's no bears, but when you go to the spot where the bears are populated. You run into patches of them, and that's kind of like... Well, just because we haven't found one yet doesn't mean it's not there. If yeah, it's but, f- yeah it, but they're, they're supposed to be everywhere. If they're everywhere, if, do we would, I think we'd uh, find them. And that goes, back, it, that goes back to my original uh, statement, is um, the, the new species that we find are in isolated patches where we've never been. We have been going bananas looking for these things in a large range of areas for the better part of a century. So that's why it hurts. But I, even that, we haven't explored a lot of the forest that's available to us. If, well, if I'd like us to keep going. I th- I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm not saying it's baloney. You know, but I'm just saying is, as of right now, unless you give me some harder evidence than oh, that. Oh, I'm right there, too. Uh, all right. I completely if, agree with you. Mm-hmm. If Sasquatch is a forest spirit, though, couldn't it, couldn't it, if it was a magical forest spirit, wouldn't it be able to make noises of multiple people? Easily. Do you yes. believe in Santa Claus? Yes. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Don't ruin my childhood. <laughs> so don't explain it. <laughs> yes. As far as he's concerned, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I think there's multiple Santa Clauses, which is why, you know, everyone gets presents all the time. I think actually Santa Claus is a, is a conspiracy. There's actually hundreds of them. How awesome would that be? There's tons of Santa Clauses. That would it, that would care. That would explain why. That would explain why fresh off the boats, Asian Santa Claus was on ABC, probably being watched by the government. Maybe they're trying. Maybe they're trying to spill their secrets a little bit, and then cover them back up. I may have to edit that out too, uh, in case CBS is listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, then edit it out. Let's just forget I said that. I don't want to be taken away. All right, let's uh, let's get some final thoughts. All right, let's uh, turn the, the mic back to Chris real quick. Well, let's go with your final thoughts, Don. What are your final thoughts on this topic? Have, has anyone swayed you in any way? I have not been swayed, uh, primarily because a lot of the stuff, you know, for most of this, I kind of pretty much knew the positions of. Um, I do agree that 
if there is evidence and the evidence that, you know, if we find more evidence and scrutinizing the evidence that we have should be done. I think that, you know, if, if you can have enough evidence to build a hypothesis and test those hypotheses, you should do it. I don't think we should prioritize, not prioritize this just because, you know, there's a kind of a cultural aspect to it that says, oh, it's fake, blah, 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 blah. I think critical thinking goes both, both ways. You need to critically think about things that you prioritize as well as critically think about things that you don't prioritize because if you, if you worry too much about, you know, application or utility or whatever, then that makes science political and I don't want to do that. So I look forward to more evidence if the evidence is out there. If the evidence is out there or we don't find the evidence, I'm going to stick with my position that there's probably no anomalous primate in North America. Let's go to you, John. What do you think? Has you been swayed at all by anything that us crazy bastards have said? Swayed in what regard? It was pretty firm. In I know you're, you were when I came in you, here. You were a firm believer earlier. Are you uh, believing it all now? Well, are you I still believe, believing? I believe that there are other things out there that we don't know what they are yet. Um, I believe there may not be a seven foot hairy ape man somewhere, but for me, Sasquatch in itself is my reminder to keep an open mind when I go throughout my life. So I believe I'm with, you know, Dr. Dom that more research does need to be done. There's too many things going on to make me think that there's not something happening. Um, the London Trackway, for instance, is hundreds of Bigfoot prints. I mean, if somebody's gonna hoax a Bigfoot print, why would you put make 200 prints? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not swayed. I still believe that there is something else going on that needs to be investigated further. What about you, Chris? I still think there is a creature out there. I mean, uh, does it warrant more expo exploration? Absolutely. But cultures, past, present, globally, all have some sort of record of these, whether you believe that that record is myth and legend or you believe that those creatures existed 10, 20,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago here in North America, if that's, if that's the number we're going to put on it. But right up until today there's so many sightings uh there's photographs there's video evidence there's uh, too many footprints to count at this point in time and i know there's no body uh but listen it if 90 uh, i think jenny made a great point if 99 percent of those are hoaxes that's exciting because that means that all it takes is one of those videos and one of those footprint print casts to be real and it's a creature that we have yet to discover. And to me, that's exciting. And I think it, I, I'm not willing, I'm not ready to tell you how they live or, or what their family units are or what their personality is or whether or not, you know, they're weekend warriors or they like to go to happy hour on or Fridays they're inbred. or, or, they're, or they're, they're inbred, inbred or, or the whatever <laughs> that is. But what I, what I believe is that there is, and uh, there is, some sort of anomaly there that we need to spend more time. And I think that scientific community right now uh, is is blowing it off. And I know that Meldrum, uh, there's a there's a gentleman up in Toronto that uh, is also an advocate for it, and they've taken a lot of heat. And I think that's a political thing. We forget sometimes. And, Doc, I'm sure you can attest to this every once in a while, and you may not want to do it on the air, but uh, academics is just as political as as – you know, as the corporate world. So uh, I think politics plays a big part in this and funding plays a huge part in it. We can't, uh, we can't throw out the fact that money is the ultimate factor here. And it's one of the reasons we see independent research organizations trying to raise the money to figure out whether or not these animals exist and not the scientific community. So I think it warrants more exploration. I think that, uh, I think there's something there. I really do. All right. I think uh, maybe I've been swayed a little bit that Bigfoot ever existed. Dom's earlier thing where he said if they existed 10,000 years ago, maybe we wouldn't find some of the, the bones or fossils of it. It kind of has me swayed a little bit that Bigfoot may have existed in the past. But I don't think that Bigfoot exists today. I think there there is a lot of funding for Bigfoot research, except it's all coming from reality TV. 
They, re- I'm, I bet you they spend more money than, uh, than people really do spend on digs, setting up all the cameras, going through everything. I really do feel like there's a lot of money being spent on Bigfoot research. Even yeah, more but are those paleoanthropologists? Who cares? They're looking for Bigfoot with cameras <laughs> everywhere, man. X-ray vision. They got the the parabolic mics out. We just watched something on Animal Planet that I failed to edit out, but. There's a huge thing where there's everyone with all these giant big boom mics like they got the NFL listening <laughs> for them. There's all kinds of shit going on. They're looking for the damn thing, and they can't find it. I think if anyone could have found it, Joe Rogan would have found it. <laughs> and uh, Joe Rogan couldn't find it, so I'm not sure it's out there. And I do think there would be a one goddamn stupid one that would walk right into the town and get shot by something somewhere. <laughs> get hit by a truck. <laughs> <laughs> or the one that's dry humping a tree and it can't stop, like the little pervy one. There's one of those things out there of everything. And that would that'd be the one we catch on film. Dry humping a tree, leaving it spooge. There'd be something, yeah. some evidence of the goddamn happen, thing. It could still happen, Jeff. It could still happen. Jeff, I'm really happy you didn't, leave, you didn't say my full name. <laughs> the record. <laughs> <laughs> I figured by the end you wouldn't want that to be said. <laughs> so to all you Sasquatches listening, stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I joke, but I really think that we would have found some evidence if there's this many Sasquatches out there. And that's my bottom line. Now to the most important person in the room. What did we convince the 10-year-old that believes in Santa Claus? Is there a Sasquatch? <laughs> So if there is a Sasquatch, uh, a Yeti, (laughs) if there's a Sasquatch, then it's definitely a science-defying creature because it obviously is very smart because it hasn't been found. Like the doctor said, he doctor in the room said, um, it's its footprints are hard to find and they're just really good at hiding everything. Mr. Chris did have great footprint evidence, by the way. That that's very. Very persuading. And I think um, if they do exist and they're not some sort of weird spirit creature that existed some million years ago and somehow made it to today or just revived itself like in a fantasy movie, like you see them revive themselves into modern day or something. If it's not one of those, then it's definitely just a science-defying furry creature. But I'm, I think I'm, I'm, think I'm leaning towards... It does exist, but it's not. It's not what we think it is. It's something different. Something. So it's like shamanistic. Yeah. It has like, magic powers, like magical Ms. capabilities. Like Miss Jenny said, it it tell it reminds you to keep an open mind, and that it could be anything. It could, it may not just be a normal creature. It may be. It could be an alien, but I doubt it's an alien. I. It could be a tree spirit. It could be anything. Do you think uh, eight of them pull Santa's reindeer, or Santa's sled? There's misidentified as a reindeer. What if they identify as reindeer, even though they're Sasquatches? Then that would turn into politics, and we don't want this <laughs> politics. Is this like a, a gender yeah, thing now? They identi- Sasquatch yeah, yeah. identifies as caribou? Like. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> it was an identity thing, a sexual identity thing. Oh, it's Lord. a species identity thing now. All right, I got to text. My son is losing his Great, we're going to have a whole new <laughs> thing of bathrooms. <laughs> 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 Squatch rooms. All right, Miss Jenny's right. gonna leave. We're Thank gonna close much, it down <laughs> on this. It. We're gonna Enjoyed go out with some, much. some scary music. Call me back when you want to do the Loch Ness monster. Oh man! <laughs> oh, great. If we do whether dinosaurs exist or not, you don't want to call me in here because it's gonna get real ugly. I want get, I want you in here, and I'm gonna mm-hmm. have someone else sitting in here for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure they're not in arm's distance from me. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> Nice to meet you. All right. From the Fan Doozy Studios in rainy western New York. Caveman's Conspiracies is out of here. There's no goddamn Bigfoot. (laughs) 